All right, so there's kind of this bigger, this, this broad issue, and I'm, I'm starting to see how it's affecting a wide variety of, of conversations, really how it affects them all. And it's, it's something I've, I've harped on uh, for years, and, but, but people always just think it's some sort of a line. Like with Samazio, you know, there's been a lot of, I'm not trying to convince you. Yet it looks like I'm <clears throat> trying to make compelling arguments and whatnot. Um, so which is it? It's, well, it's just, it's like, um, it's like a shadow from a three-dimensional object onto a two-dimensional surface. We're dealing with projections and a lot of our confusion, things seem correlated is because our projections are either uh, done with non-orthogonal uh, bases or um, are just um, not enough dimensions in them. And I think that's basically the struggle most people, uh, whatever the subject, really, whatever side they're on and, and how much they struggle, some people tend to have, you know, as individuals will have more insight onto it. But in terms of uh, by, um, by subject uh, or expertise, not so much. Um, but basically, um, I, I take this as a territory, right? And you can actually create these territories. Um, these are cognitive territories. So like, you know, here's, here's feminism, right? Um, or rather, here's a type of feminism. Maybe there's a bunch of types of feminism, you know. And in uh, some sense, uh, you know, we might call, you know, that, that set, that area, that's feminism, right? All right. Now, with a, a graph like this, you can actually have axes Right, you could use the like the economic conservative versus liberal and the uh, social conservative versus liberal. Right, um, but you don't have to do that. Often that can that actually by putting those two dimensions, then you have trouble here. So you can also just have a loose one, um, a loose territory. Uh, I'd like to create the technical ones, um, usually it's because, like, I wanted to do a simulation. Like, I had a, um, I have a political game that I've designed, might make some time, and, um, so for that, uh, I had, I wanted to assign political position colors. So to do that, you have to have a three-dimensional, uh, a three-dimensional, uh, uh, space, uh, where there's the, you know, each color, right? And so the way I, and this, this is designed to allow, see, uh, this kind of a, I'll get back to things you can understand, but some of you might, uh, might get the technical part. If you do an axis, uh, this rectilinear part, you know, it really shows people are going to look on there and they're going to see that and they're going to see that. If that one's a little bit higher and that one's a little bit lower, and if you don't know, should they be on the same line? All right. Doing this, because it is a non-rectilinear, uh, I made that a right right angle, but this is supposed to be equilateral. Let me do it this way. Okay, so and this is, uh, uh, oh, I could do it in the right color, huh? So this will be... I'm gonna get back to the part. Um, I did put blue here. I like to put blue there, and then we have the red here. And, um, and this allows me to take any political uh, position and have to force it into the mold a little bit. But this is how aggressive the thing is. This is how just simply practical it is. And this is how much it's uh, socially nurturing, right? You could do this. Uh, actually, I originally uh, designed this to do simulate genes in a separate game where uh, I wanted animals to be able to evolve one into the other. So I could have the sweet little guinea pig down here and, and the shrew over here more towards the aggressive side. 
you know, and an animal that's just really fast and running away, and therefore I would have a path. It doesn't have to be perfect, that path. It would work for, for game purposes. I think that's where I came up with this RGB thing, and I realized you can plot it to everything. And then politically, you can have pragmatism, aggression, and, um, you know, nurturing or social, nurturing social policies. So, like, uh, politically, let's say we're plotting uh, what someone thinks should happen to a, um, to, to a drug addict. Uh, you know, this person's like, someone that's there is like, incarcerate them. Someone's here is like, you know, uh, let them into your home, take them under your wing. <coughs> Someone here is like, well, you know, they need treatment. Someone here is like, well, they need they need treatment and they need to be incarcerated, you know. And someone over here uh, might be, um, they need you know they need uh, loving treatment and um, and to be in there in you know in an in an out in an outpatient home. And here is like, oh, pretty much the same, but they need to be incarcerated while it goes on. So you can chart things. Now, I love the technical ones, but here on YouTube, I mean, we don't usually get to that technical of a level, so that's just something you have to deal with. So here, we'll go back to, here's the territory. Things we're talking about, positions that we, we have. All right. And let's say here is my position. Um, I have a variety of things, I believe. Uh, so this is, let's say, uh, relativism. This is various points and positions in relativism. Or why do that? Uh, we got relativism. It doesn't really matter, but if I get too abstract and don't say a subject, but relativism itself is, a, is, a, is abstract for most of you people. Okay, so um, how about... Um, well, I mean, I was doing the feminism. So here's a kind of feminism, and here's a little bit different, and here's a little bit different, and there's one up here even. And so I'm going to say, well, this is feminism in general. Otherwise, you know, we use an adjective to talk about one of those. So that's feminism. Okay. Now, if somebody comes along that's kind of, I don't know where they are, but they're outside of feminism, let's say. When I... Uh, when I describe this territory, I say, hey, uh, I, I'm, I'm right here next to feminism. And the reason is, is because there's this bigger group uh, humanism. Right? And then we could argue about things like, I'm saying, uh, I, I think I think feminism is a much bigger part of humanism than that. Right? And there used to be, and, and it's also the face of humanism. And there used to be labor uh, over here. And to a certain degree, there still is. But it's almost like, no... It's just a little thing here. I'm talking not about the fact that labor unions exist or shrinking. I mean their representation in political activism. And so that creates a debate about that domain. And if someone is out here, and we don't know exactly what they are, except for that they're saying, well, I'm on the other side of that threshold, and we're trying to find out. You're the unknown. The nicest thing I could do is give you a chance. And you're like, well, I just, I just don't think I want to be in there. So we go, so I go, hey, I will describe why I'm in there and why, uh, and it starts off as, oh, why am I in here? I'm next to these guys. I'm in here. I'm describing that whole situation. And my challenge is to, to this person is trying to shine light on that territory, right? It's possible I find out the person isn't even over there, right? Oh, they're right here. It's 
far as I know, it's possible they're over here in some forgotten part of uh, feminism. Some forgotten, like, like there's a uh, an ironic kind of feminism of women aren't allowed to stay at home and 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 just take care of the household anymore. That's looked down on, or you know, I'm not advocating. I'm saying that that could be called a form of for feminism. That's a, a distant part or a lost part that some of these feminists might want to say that's not real Scotsmanship feminism. Oh, by the way. We have to name things, people. There is such a thing as whether or not someone is a real Scotsman. So, for example, if somebody has never been to Scotland and claims, you know, and and, and it, it's just they're not a Scotsman, there is a criteria for Scotsmanship. And what real, when, when someone says oh, what a real Scotsman does, it's not a matter that you can't ignore that is that the Scotsman the real Scotsman fallacy is not really it's a, it's an indication you know fallacies have characteristics they're not all just fallacies the real Scotsman fallacy actually is a semantic indicator that it, it, it's always an indicator of, of a problem that could be solved by uh, defining your words or for example sharing a word and and distinguishing a meaning through an uh, an adjective right so because on, for example on the one hand I think philosophy is the kind of thing you could just say your philosopher is like that's the only document that you need to be a philosopher and yet no I think really you have to be logical but then there's an open questions as to what are valid logic and some people would say emotional logic or all kinds of things that uh, are not uh, strictly coherent logic or what we would uh, people that, that like formal logic would consider valid logic they're illogic but there's still a um, methodology by which you process ideas which is the original general meaning of a, of a logic and um, so maybe someone could be illogical and still be a philosopher and it's, it sort of comes down to me uh, to, to the intentionality and in the end though if you are not honest if you contradict yourself if you give a logos and a, and, and a way of processing it and then you violate it yourself I feel I'm a relativist and I feel that I can judge people on sticking with their own rules you get to make your own rules and I'm only judging if you follow your own rules and if you don't you're not really a philosopher. What I'm saying is Ayn Rand is not actually a philosopher. Okay, just as a side note. So I tell people where I stand. Oh, I know why that's going, because I need the book. I, have a, I need to use my, um, my Oxford Dictionary of Philosophy Tighten the bungee. I forgot. Took that out. Yeah, that, now it's better. Jeez. Okay. So I see myself as uh, these are you guys. And uh, and I'm a free agent. I'm like, hello, feminists. I was here to aid you in your problem today, and I'm going over here today. Why? Because I'm going to look. Because even though I have allegiances to certain territories that I like, there's more than one. There's all kinds of there's territory over here I like. Um, so I'm out here. This is uh, this is. Um, that's Piero. I am not trying to get you to move, not not initially. And I know you might feel like you're, I'm getting you to move because I say something to you, da, 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 and it knocks you off your feet, and you're like, whoa, and you get knocked back. And like you're trying to move me. No, I'm sorry, that's just the uncertainty principle. See, if I put words out towards you, like um, to radar you, and it's, you know, to scan, the photons themselves might push you over, the photons of my flashlight. Whoa. Or startle you more like, probably, huh? 
But I want you, if it's possible, to stay put at first. I want to find out where you are. Now, the funny thing, like with Skeptical Heretic as an example, is you think, I mean, aren't we all, like, we're supposed to all be self-promoters and narcissists at some point. You think, why don't people, what they do is they'll go, whoop. I'm not there, don't pin me down, don't pin me down. Okay, in life you don't want to be pinned down, but in making an argument, it's not pinning down, it's taking territory, you know, it's, it's putting your feet in the ground. Um, but obviously I don't understand the actual activity as other people see it. So what I end up doing is like, oh, okay, and people say, I, I'm not there. So we'll, uh, we'll like say, oh, okay, that's in reserve, that's okay. But I don't forget it because often I know people will be back there when they think I'm not looking. <laughs> and so we go, okay, you're down there, and I put some more words. And they're kind of like, well, no. <laughs> and this didn't even get fully defined. And I'm like, well, he started to declare a territory. He, he, I, he, I'm in this territory. But then he didn't finish it. And I'll often wonder, well, can it be finished? Is this just a front? Or, or is there really a complete territory? And this is how I learn things from you guys. Because you just, woo! And but these territories, even though you're running around, and you, you create traces of little territories you temporarily claim to be in. And what I end up seeing is little tunnels. Little tunnels. Tunnel over here. And online, the interesting thing is it could be the real territory over here. You know? And this might be real life. You know, you go to work, you have a family or whatever. Beep, 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 beep. Ooh, play, beep, Because territory is claimed, but nobody ever really owns a territory. What they do is they travel among their territory, right? So that territory of feminism, I believe that could be identified in these spaces abstract, and you can even get technical. Um, and it's useful if you're not that technical about it. But people don't stay in territories. They move all around, lots of them, depending on the culture and the time and the, you know, the mobility in general, the, 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 how, how, how efficient mobility is. And then if it's very efficient, then just people's mentality. So some people stay put a lot and some people travel around. And a lot of people have little warrens, little that they run around in. And I would like people to just say, okay, look, yes, this is a part of my territory. You know, I know there's other ideas. As far as I'm concerned, we're trying to discuss this. The honest person would say, look, this is what I believe. This is my main territory. But you're trying to attack it and make it characterize it a certain way, it seems like to me. And this person would say, because I see you as in this territory, so you're trying to characterize it a certain way. And that person would go, now, if you pay close attention, I could always do this. I could, I could take this, and you, you can't really say anything. And then we're not going to have a cooperation, so let's make a compromise. And we come back in this way, and you have a standing of, of common ground. Uh, and we find out that, oh, there is this overlap. And that means that, you know, when it comes time to celebrating the holidays, uh, you know, I could be here and you could be here, but when it comes time to, to vote on whether we robot kill people, um, if we want to get along, let's try to work from principles in the overlap region. Because if we can limit ourselves to principles that are from in here, that we both accept, and we can get to a conclusion from those principles we both accept, then we, even though we have these vast regions of difference, we will be able to use those principles to come to a, a, common, a common idea. And because of the way logic works, and the way moving in the territory works, and the abstraction of it, it, 
you can't have this territory of human ideas is not two dimensional, right? It's not two dimensional. So the idea you will get from principles in here will not necessarily be in there itself because it's not like logic like that. These could be principles of commonality plus applying it to the real world and you'll have some idea about the real world that doesn't actually chart here because we finally will have gotten back to the real world where we're trying to decide whether we kill people with robots, who we, whose billions of dollars we steal to spy on which other billions of people, um, whether we build roads and power, whether we want longer lives, uh, these real issues are, we think about them, I believe I can chart the thinking and stuff can come out of the board by identifying where we have agreements. Right, I don't see why someone like Skep wouldn't want to find out where we have the agreements. And it's like, well, it's because his hobby is ragging on people that he thinks he can make fun of. Well, that's fine. But when you're doing that and then and part one of your audience after a show comes up, well, he didn't do a show. I think he'd do a show, Skep. And it comes up and says, hey, all oh, interesting issues, but you don't really think that, um, uh, are, are you really saying that you know, to, to support Snowden's like believing in chemtrails, you know. And at that point, you can, you can, it's after the show and even in public while there's other audience, you could go, well, I mean, I just put it that way. Mostly, I think that that person is, is um, this particular individual is like this and that, but I heard, but here's what I believe and that is my territory. And look, and, and it's like, oh, because it looked like this, it looks like this is your territory. <laughs> You know, this this says that uh, you're saying, well, it could put it this way. It looks like you're saying that here's the territory of people that support Snowden. And here's the territory of conspiracy theorist types that believe, in, you know, chemtrails, Comet Ison is going to blow us up and we're going to miss lizards. And here, this Snowden is a subset. What is the fucking problem of if somebody comes along that you would say, that you would not want to clarify and say, no, I'm just saying that those sets overlap. It's because you guys don't see this. I don't know, I don't know how many dimensions you guys are using to chart ideas, but I have always found it important to, um, to, to like figure out how what ideas were next to each other so it's really important to get a good description oh thank you it's to get a description of where someone is at right in to enough degree that you could see the overlap you have enough details so you can realize that hey some of the things that describe this group describe this group and that's this Now, am I trying to convince you to use this way of thinking? Sadly, no, because I don't think people think as graphically as me. I have a lot of experience thinking this way. I, 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 I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. That's how I think. It should make you better arguing against me, knowing that this is how I think of the, the situation. I start to plot out and have an idea. And then I have a very good, so also as a result of this, I think I get a very good sense of whether people are cagey and shifty about where they stand. They often just beam their stuff through and it's like, I'm not telling you where the message is coming from. And it's usually in the form of, I'm just saying you're wrong. I'm just saying you're wrong. Piro, you're wrong. That's all I'm saying. Oh, where are you? I would like to talk to you. All that matters is if you are wrong or not. It's like, no. Was there a wrong in my chart? Was there a right and a wrong? No. No. There's battle fronts. Between the feminists and the anti-feminists. Boop. Oh, this
this is getting quite long. <laughs>